Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to another video. As you can tell, this one's gonna be with the Alpine. My Alpine A110 Premier Edition, as you can see right behind me, which has recently had this livery put on it. Now there's gonna be a link to that video somewhere around in one of the corners, so you guys can go watch that. If you haven't seen it yet, me walking around, the first impressions I had of when I first saw this wrap. But I thought I would do a little video because I've now owned this car enough to know all of the sort of little intricacies and details of this car and to run you by what it's like to be the owner of one of these cars and all the little secrets that you maybe don't know unless you've actually spent some proper quality time with it. So I'm just gonna keep the camera rolling and I'm gonna walk around the car and show you some of the stock parts and a few of the things we've added. And yeah, let's just get started, shall we? Now this is an Alpine a110 premier edition now alpine is a french car brand which you guys probably know for its extensive sort of racing and rallying history and their most popular car was called the a110 now back in the day the a110 was punching way above its weight in the rally competitions and they've decided to relaunch a modern version of said car now this car was launched a few years ago in geneva and as soon as i saw it i was interested in getting my hands on one of these now they've gone for the light two-seater mid-engine sports car sort of vibe with this little thing it's very very cute it's actually not very long at all not very wide either if you're wondering where we are also we're just in my driveway so apologize for the little cars in the, in the background but yeah it's, it's actually a very very small compact car which is very practical for driving it around I'm living in London at the moment and it makes it really really easy to live with now we're gonna go from the front end to the back now round front a few things I've noticed is that one the ground clearance as I'm sure you can tell there is absolutely fantastic so to use this car for driving around every day you don't need to worry about hitting the front end right there now this car as I mentioned is a premier edition so they're gonna be different versions of the Alpine a110 production cars production sort of runs of those cars but this is a limited edition now the a110 premier edition they made 1955 to commemorate the uh, year of the uh, a110 and of Alpine and this is one of the last ones right hand drive there aren't that many right hand drive versions of this car and this one came in alpine blue this color right here so this is the stock color and uh, all of the yellow and everything you see has been added onto it ever since now these fog lights I will point out I have added as well to make it look more like the old-school rally cars but those aren't normally there but there's some really nice details like these little air vents right here which go through which look very cool and are also very useful in terms of aerodynamics and cooling of the front tires right there and front brakes now you've got the four light layout to have a bit of a throwback towards the old car now normally you also have alpine script on the front here which we have taken off for the wrap and you've got this really nice sort of little hump right here in the middle uh, which is continued as well i'm not sure if you can see it but there are two humps on the bonnet as well now that again is a throwback to the original rally car now you've got 18 inch alloys uh, all the way around this car there are loads of nice little details and that's one of the things that they've done really well on this car is the details so you've got the alpine script on the rim here and you've got these brakes which we've actually added uh, yellow script on usually that comes in white but also finished in the alpine blue which look very cool and you've even got alpine engraved on the discs there so those sorts of details are really very nice you've also got the vent sort of louvers coming in from this front vent right here so that that can cool down and help with airflow the tires are running on the front are 205 40s and um, they're michelin tires and on the back they're 240s really good tire this car also has wishbone suspension all round and what that means is that it allows the car to sort of um, skip a bit more and gives it a bit more play in the suspension which means you keep a big contact patch on the tarmac um, which allows it to sort of put its power down uh, a bit better and it's a really nice feeling when you're on a country lane or on a track now the slight sort of payoff of, or, or the not so good thing about that is that you get a little bit of body roll and uh, now that goes into the character of the car but there is a bit of body roll when you're really pressing on it with this car anyway some more details we've got the alpine logo there which we again have finished in black and yellow usually that is just chrome and then we come around there is uh, a little bit of a plasticky feel in some areas of this car i'll show you inside but on the mirrors right here you've got this plastic around the outside around the rim of it which doesn't feel particularly nice now up to the roof there is a double bubble roof you can probably just about see it there 
that will come in uh, you know and be more relevant when we look at the inside of this car um, but that also brings us on to more air vents these really nice little details and right here you've got a little air vent which goes straight to the engine because the engine is right in the middle of the car right here now there's also a little french flag because this is a french car company now while we're around where the engine is it's time to walk you through a few stats this is a 1.8 liter turbo four cylinder uh, with 250 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque newton meters of torque sorry uh, which may not sound like a lot but this car only weighs around 1,100 kilos. Now compared to the competition, the Porsche Cayman is about 300 kilos more than that, and the TTRS about 400 kilos. So it's extremely light. It's actually a bit lighter than my old Lotus Exige. So it's very, very light. The only thing that's lighter is really a Lotus Elise. Now, when you come all the way around back, you've got these really nice, almost 911 looking lights. You've got a boot there, which I'll walk you around uh, after we show you the interior. And down bottom, you've got this central exhaust and a rather lovely diffuser. Now, it's very simple and sleek and elegant, this design, uh, just to make the air sort of slip over it. When we come around back, we've got the calipers around back as well which are actually interesting because they, right in here, you can maybe see, they also feature the parking brakes. And that's something new that they're, they're launching sort of on this Alpine, but the rear brake caliper also features the parking brake and that's to save weight and it saves about two and a half kilos. Now weight saving is something which we'll be uh, looking at a lot because many things are here for weight saving. So. You, you know the usual traditional doors you open this car up and you're greeted by a really rather lovely interior now as you can see the alpine blue is continued around the interior right here and uh, we've got the french flag again and some lovely quilted leather now the lovely leather continues on the armrest here and on this door handle but that's surrounded by some pretty cheap feeling and cheap looking plastic which is not very nice and then you've got these focal speakers which are okay they're not great um, they're not terrible either but they're okay they're better than what you get on a Lotus and a 4C but they're not as good as what you get on a Porsche Cayman they kind of have this um, look you know where they're quite open and that again is to save weight but then actually just feels and looks a little bit cheap now the cheap plastic is also continued down under here which you won't touch that often apart from to adjust your mirrors but it's also just not the nicest feeling stuff in the world this one only has 300 miles my car so it's still got all the plastic um, everywhere where the plastic was when I got the car now what is nice is that you get these carbon fiber details around the interior so just to make it clear on the premier editions they just come fully spec so you can't spec anything on this car it's 52,000 pounds straight off the bat and there's no spec apart from choosing the color so all of this comes completely standard so you got carbon fiber here and you got carbon there now it, it does not feel like it's the most top quality stuff but you know it looks pretty cool now the interior compared to the competition such as alpha and lotus is way ahead it doesn't feel quite as plush potentially as a porsche cayman but it's very very nice these seats are absolutely gorgeous now they've they're a mix of alcantara around the middle and quilted leather around the sides and they actually only weigh i believe it is 12 kilos each you cannot actually tilt them backwards um, you can only do it by unbolting some bolts down here and then you can do it manually sort of put it back a little bit but you can't do that easily at all i'm just going to hop into the car uh, and close the door because it is freezing outside so then I can actually walk you through some of the details in here now when you come in you're greeted by a lot of screens so as you can tell the screen here in front of you the dashboard is all digital so 318 miles on this car so really not many at all um, and then down here on the center console you have this nice console which uh, feels pretty solid actually and is also finished in this carbon fiber finish and you have a little storage bin here for your phone or the car key I'll show you the car key in a little bit as well now storage is something there is not much of in this car there is no glove box and only one little very shallow cup holder right here there's hardly any space behind the seats either um, but if we go down here there are a few little things that annoy me a little bit like the cruise control activation buttons are down here but the rest of all the cruise control buttons are on the steering wheel I don't know why they didn't just put the cruise control buttons up on the steering wheel as well but um, yeah <laughs> it doesn't really make sense but that's just the way it is it's a bit annoying if you're driving on the motorway 
Uh, we've also got this big start stop engine button um, which is actually really nice and uh, it looks quite cool as well the window controls are in the middle middle right under all of your gearbox controls so this car is only available in a double clutch automatic which is good it's it's good it's not the best but it is pretty good um, it's not available in manual that would have cost them too much they looked into doing it it's a shame but Alpine uh, just simply um, couldn't sort of afford to do that um, also Alpine the name um, you know people say is it Alpine Alpine the, the real way of saying it the French way of saying it is Alpine I some, sometimes say Alpine just without thinking but yeah anyway so you got drive no, uh, neutral and reverse and to put it into park you actually just press and hold the neutral button so if I start the car show you the dashboard I'll be able to demonstrate that so foot on the brake down there and these lovely pedals um, press the start stop button and the car starts up so right now you can maybe tell so that is in neutral handbrake on but oh, okay if we put it in drive and if I press and hold on neutral when it goes red that means that it is in park and if you press drive if you press it once you're going to drive press it a second time it lights up in blue and that means you're in manual which means you can use these paddles the paddles are nice solid feeling you know sort of nice metallic feel they're fixed to the column which is nice if you're turning sort of in one direction because they extend up so you can then clip them but if you're turning in the other direction they don't extend down and so sometimes you find yourself sort of looking for those all over the place but they are right behind a really rather lovely steering wheel which is finished in half Alcantara leather and you've got a, a few little blue accents like the stitching and this ring right here um, I think it would have been nice if it was all Alcantara but uh, it's still quite nice you've also got this you know this fake metallic feeling stuff which isn't great but uh, it does look quite cool and the Alpine logo again a bit more cheap plastic around the steering wheel but uh, overall this is a very very nice interior don't get me wrong now the dashboard is pretty cool because as you can tell you know there's a bunch of information so you got your your um, temperature time and fuel readings right there and then there's a little button on the back of the stalk if you press that oh wait no that's the wrong button my bad it's on this stalk there we go here are the um here are the the arrows if you press those so you can go through different settings in the um rev counter in the center right there so you can go all the way tire pressure and actually a g meter your radio um compass and those are your revs so if you rev the car a bit see it's a digital reading of your revs very very nice now you probably noticed there is a sport button right here. When you press the sport button, the dashboard changes into a much more sporty version of itself. So all the information changes. Now you can see how much of the horsepower you're using, how many of the Newton meters of torque, and the rev count and speedometer have obviously changed. The fuel reading is now all the way down there. And it's a very cool layout. These lights here will sort of light up to tell you when to change gear, which is very Formula One. And you can tell now it's red all the way down here, but that's just because the engine's cold, so it won't let, let you rev really past 3,000. But the red line is just over 6,000. And then if you press and hold the sports button further, you go into track mode when traction control is switched off. And this is a very track focused um, sort of dashboard right here. So as you can tell, you've got the mostly digital dashboard rev readout right there. Um, but it's a very, very cool sort of way of having the, the dashboard you know, layout. Um, I really like it, but you leave it most of the time if you're cruising around in normal mode. If you put it in sport, it does open a valve in the exhaust. The car does sound quite good, not amazing. You know, it's still only a four cylinder. They've added some nice little pops and bangs on lift off and when you change up or down. But those are only really available when you're in sport mode, which I automatically put myself in, to be honest. When we come around the side here, we've got down bottom, we've got all of the um, sort of heating and air conditioning controls. Pretty straightforward. You've got your fan speed here. The temperatures auto and then where you want it to go and then up here you've got a few very lamborghini-esque buttons um so you got your auto start stop on and off your traction which is now off so you get a little readout here and that'll tell you we'll whack that back on hazards and then lock unlock and then this one i don't know what that's going to be there are going to be more variants of this car one with 300 horsepower coming in not too long so maybe that'll be a button for that 
Then we've got this little sort of GPS sat nav screen here. Um, now the sat nav itself on this car is not good. It's not very good at all. I just use Waze on my phone. I never really use this. And it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. It's got this MySpin, which uh, in theory does the same thing, but doesn't work very well. I, I often struggle to connect my phone via Bluetooth. A lot of the buttons are also very small and hard to press when you're driving. But overall, it's quite a clear readout. Um, now, when you press the Alpine button, right there it brings you onto this really really cool sort of screen where you can see a bunch of information on your car so you can see your you know your information on your brakes your coolant temperature turbo pressure intake temperature a bunch of things so you can just keep scrolling through all of this and you can see when i accelerate it all adjusts accordingly yeah i mean you've got your lap times you've got your g readout you've got all sorts of different things and that is very cool and you actually end up using that more than you would think necessarily and on the inside that's pretty much all to show you got a really nice sort of aluminium kick plate there for the passenger it is all an aluminium build which means it's very light that's how they got that lightness i, I really like the way this car feels now it's quick, it's not hugely quick, it's about 4.4 seconds to 60 and around a country road it is so much fun. It's not for bashing out lap times but it's more just for enjoying your time uh, on some nice little country roads. And for that, as I mentioned, the suspension is genius because it is comfortable when you're daily driving it but it's still pretty good when you're um, bashing it on these roads. And the steering kind of goes with that so it's sort of quite light when you put a, a small amount of lock in it but it it weighs itself increasingly the more you turn it so it gives you a really nice steering feel but it's also useful when you're driving it around town the brakes are very nice then you know they're not carbon ceramics they're steel brakes obviously but you have a good amount of feel from them because the car is so light so there's a good amount of pedal feel and you, you know what's going on with this car which is lovely and i really enjoy being able to drive this car properly and i am going to do videos sort of taking this on some proper b roads a few other things i just remembered that i forgot to tell you about on the inside is you can probably tell the back window is very tinted but it is a pretty pathetic view out of the back it's a tiny little letterbox sort of style view and also this shelf here there is glass there so you you can't put any bags on it because the engine's there so you can't use that for storage but the view under the rear view mirror is not great and then these sun visors there's no cover so when you're driving to you know stop the sun getting in your eyes you end up just as you can tell you end up just looking at the dashboard right there so it's a bit distracting but worse has happened hasn't it lads there's been worse things known to man switch the car off engine stop open the door now it's all sort of keyless go let me just get the key out for you so it's pretty straightforward now that being said i haven't really ever been able to properly get the keyless go working i don't know if that's just me being an idiot but there is a button on the outside i'll show you this is the key right here so it's basically a megan key just in a nice little pouch and you've got unlock lock this will switch the lights on and that's for the boot in the back but in theory i believe you get out of the car and you just press this button oh great now now that i'm filming it's now worked usually it doesn't work and then you press it again and it unlocks okay yeah well good news that's now working it wasn't at first um the light button uh, now the lights are on so it won't work but when you press that and you just want to take photos of the car with the lights on uh, you can just press that now there's the rear boot which i'll show you right now which is fairly pathetic now this also you need to press a few times before it actually opens now there we go so you just press a little button and you've got this little rear boot which is absolutely tiny i've got all of the um sort of packs that come with the car so you get this you get a little alpine uh, tool kit and a safety pack as well as um, um, engine oil and things like that but the boot is minuscule around back it's a very awkward shape as well it goes a bit further down that way you know that's a, that's about all you get there is however a front boot the reason the boot is so small back there is because the engine is right here and in order to access the engine you can't just press a button and lift this up there are three or four screws i believe you need to unscrew and this all lifts up and then you need to untie another eight screws so to change your oil and everything it's a bit of a nightmare now for the front boot you have to come on the passenger side on right hand drive cars obviously the driver side on left hand drive cars and come around to the front like a classic car you just have to 
pull the little latch and then you've got this pretty shallow boot around front that's because the fuel tank is underneath so like Porsches you fill it out around the front wheel latch right here um, but yeah it's still better than nothing you get a little boot and between the two of them it's okay but the storage is definitely not a strong point on this car now let me show you the light button you just press that and boom the lights go on now if you want more information on this wrap as well as i mentioned there is that video we've done the tinted windows we've done the wrap the little details all around the car and i am very very happy with it but that was just a quick little look around my alpine a110 premier edition um i just thought that you know i love watching these videos where you can get every little piece of information and every little thing from an owner's point of view now this car is so easy to live with really really good on fuel i'm averaging about like 38 miles to the gallon It'll do over 40 easily if you're cruising on the motorway. Obviously not a big engine, so not drinking that much. So it's really good on fuel, but it's still so much fun when you get to the country. So we're gonna do a lot more videos sort of really blasting this car and things like that so you can see those. And there's obviously my first drive video, the video when I collected it, and there'll be plenty more coming. But I hope you've enjoyed this little walk around the Alpine A110. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this sort of style of video, and we'll be back with plenty more content very soon. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah.